Today I'm going to give a little background on Bessel functions along with looking into the two different types of solutions. Now first some background. Bessel functions are a type of second order differential equation and they are also considered one of the special functions. Now when you do the heat equation on a circle it turns into a Cauchy Euler equation but when you do the heat equation on a cylinder it turns into a Bessel function. The general form of Bessel's differential equation is z squared times f double prime plus z times f prime plus the quantity of z squared minus n squared times f equals zero. And here we can recognize this as a second order linear differential equation with variable coefficients. Now sometimes we need to work with this equation in standard form and in order to do that we divide the entire equation by z squared so that we have a coefficient of one in front of f double prime and that gives us f double prime plus 1 over z times f prime plus the quantity of 1 over n squared over z squared times f equals 0. We will be working with both of these forms throughout this presentation. So now we have to look at a few definitions. First, the ordinary point. An ordinary point is when 1 over z and 1 minus n squared over z squared and all of their derivatives are finite at some point z equals z sub 0. But a singular point is when 1 over z and 1 minus n squared over z squared and all their derivatives are not finite at some point z equals z sub 0. Now we have to think, are there any values that will cause some difficulty? z sub 0 will be 1 because 1 over 0 does not exist. And for this Bessel equation, the rest of them are ordinary points because f of z and its derivatives exist at all of these points. So now we're going to observe the behavior when z nears 0. Using the general form introduced before, we can see that if z is very close to 0, then z squared f can be ignored because it is so small. Now z squared f double prime and z f prime cannot be ignored because there's a chance that the derivatives could be large enough that it could be greater or equal to n squared times f. After that, we get this approximation, z squared times f double prime plus z times f prime plus n squared times f equals zero. Now it is exactly solvable using Cauchy Euler. So we can let f equals z to the s, and then from there we can take the first derivative, which gives us s times z to the s minus one, and then the second derivative, s times s minus one times z to the s minus two. The next step is to plug these derivatives into our equation. And then if we combine like terms, we can get this z to the s times the quantity of s times the quantity of s minus 1 plus s minus m squared equals 0. And then if we divide by z to the s, since it equals 0, it cancels out, and we get s times s minus 1 plus s minus m squared equals 0. When we solve that, we can find that our roots are positive and negative m. Now there's two different types, when m is equal to 0 and when m is not equal to 0. When m is not equal to 0, we get two independent approximate solutions of z to the m and z to the negative m, and we'll denote this as the red star. Now if m is equal to 0, then we also get two independent solutions, but with the first one is z to the 0, which is 1, and the second one is when f is equal to ln of z. So now we can look at what we know so far. We know that there are solutions that can be well behaved near z equals zero, and we also know that solutions can be singular at z equals zero. And then we also know that the general solution will be a linear combination of these two independent solutions that satisfy what we denoted as the red star, if m is not equal to zero, and what we denoted as the blue exclamation point, if m is equal to zero. So here are the two types of solutions. j sub n of z is the Bessel function of the first kind of order n, and this one is the well-behaved solution near z equals zero. The second one, y sub n of z, is the Bessel function of the second kind of order n, and this is when the solution is singular at z equals zero. So the general solution for these two solutions is the Bessel differential equation f equals c1 times j sub n of z plus c2 times y sub n of z. j sub n of z for arbitrary z is defined by this series the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times z over 2 to the n plus 2k all over k factorial times n plus k factorial. This one is considered the well-behaved one. y sub z of z, on the other hand, is not so well-behaved. 
And this is actually has three summations in it, one of them being j sub n of z, where psi of n plus 1 is equal to little gamma plus 1 plus 1 over 2 plus the summation all the way to 1 over m. And this is the singular solution. In that y solution, the digamma function comes up. So we're going to look into that. Now the digamma function can be written in a number of different ways depending on which way you want to prove it. First, it can be written as psi of z is equal to gamma prime of z divided by gamma of z. Then, like I said, through another proof you can write it as psi of z is equal to negative little gamma plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity times the quantity of 1, plus n, 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. Now if we plug in n plus 1 or any other integer for z, we can also find that psi of n plus 1, or any integer, is equal to negative little gamma plus 1 plus a half all the way up to the summation of 1 plus m. Now this little gamma is also known as the Euler macaroni constant and it comes up in a variety of equations which we'll look into next. Like I said, the Euler macaroni constant appears in many places. A few of these are the calculations in the digamma function psi of z which we just looked at and also the second so solution of the second kind to Bessel's equation, y sub n of z, which we also just looked at. They also appear in many others, but a few that I listed here are the definition of the cosine integral along with the Laplace transform form of the natural log. Now the definition of little gamma is the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k plus ln of n. Now it is also still unknown if this constant is rational or irrational. Thank you for listening, and if you have any further questions, these are the resources I used.